So what are we going to be doing today? We're going to be able to find the derivative of an inverse function. How are we going to do this? Uh, we will be using the rule I'm going to show you to calculate the answer, and it's actually a very easy rule. And then why are we doing this is some of the skills are going to make life much easier. Um, so today we're basically going to cover um, three things. The first one is we're going to talk about taking the derivative of just in general, any any inverse, finding the derivative at a place for an inverse. And then um, from there, we're going to move on and talk about taking the derivative of a specific inverse function, the uh, logarithm. So we're going to look at the logarithm compared to the exponential, its inverse. And then finally, once we've got a pretty good handle on the logarithm, we're going to do what's called logarithmic differentiation. And logarithmic differentiation is actually uh, a way to make life a lot easier. It's going to mean that you have to do a lot less power rule, product rule, quotient rule, chain rule in certain places. Um, it's another tool that's going to help you succeed. Uh, and, you know, of course, you do it, you don't do it, whatever. If you really, really like the chain rule, you really like the product rule, you really like the quotient rule, and none of those feels like a problem, and you, you do this, and it's like, I don't like it, well, then, you know, you don't have to. But what I will tell you is that, in general, just like the chain rule makes a lot of situations a lot easier, just like the product rule and the quotient rule made a lot of things a lot easier the power rule made things a lot easier this logarithmic differentiation technique is going to mean less work for you in very specific ways so we'll we'll get there i'm 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 prefacing too much let's actually jump in okay um so the derivative of the inverse function so here's here's how this works Sometimes we're going to have, like, you all know how to find the inverse of a function. You take x, you take y, and you flip them and solve for y again. And sometimes you can do that, and it's easy, and then you can take the derivative at the spot they want you to take the derivative, and everything's great. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's really, really ugly, and nobody wants to do it it's awful but what it turns out to be true is that if you want to find the derivative of the inverse in a certain spot that derivative is the same as taking one over the derivative of the original function evaluated at that spot as well that is to say if we're talking about the we're talking about the point i don't know 5 comma 3 so the derivative of the inverse evaluated at the y value at 3 is the same as 1 over the original function evaluated at 5 so when you do this and i looked through i didn't want to cuz they're all really sort of easy they give you like some sort of linear function they're going to say evaluate it at x equals 10. what's the derivative of the inverse You know, we, they want to find this at x equals 10. Well, yeah, you could go through and figure it out, or you could realize, hey, well, when the inverse is at 10, that's the, that's the y value, the x value for the original function, so basically the inverse derivative and that's what this is, is going to be the same as the derivative of the original function
at the corresponding x value. Now, if this is if this is the input for the inverse, this is this is y, and they're, they're gonna screw with the notation because if it's if it's y for the original function, it, it's x for the inverse function, right? Or sometimes what I what I personally really hate with these, and it it even even I'm sitting there and it messes me up, is they'll do they'll do the absolute most to to the notation. I have simplified this notation for you to make it a lot easier. Sometimes you see it written like this. F inverse of F of B, the derivative equals <laughs> one over the derivative of F inverse of or something like this, some like this type of, and it's it's so absolutely ridiculously ugly and convoluted, and it makes no sense. And you're sitting there half the time, and the problem isn't that you don't know what to do. The problem isn't that you don't know. Okay, well. If I want this, I just have to find this. If I want to know what the value of the inverse is at a certain place, find the other corresponding coordinate, plug it into the original function at the derivative, and one over that. So like with this one, they give you they give you this is your f of x. And they want to find something like this. If they, they want to find the inverse at the corresponding y value, they, they'll say, what is, what is f inverse prime of 10? Or worse, they'll say at x equals 10. And that'll be confusing because you'll be thinking that that belongs over here. But in fact, it's the y value. So pay attention to what they're talking about because I think I, I saw a problem where they literally wrote it like this. And at this point, my brain went, no, that's bad notation anyway. So if they want this, this is your y value. What is x? Well, just plug in for y and find x, right? You do that 10 equals 3x plus 1. Subtract the 1, divide the 3, you better get 3. So now you have all the things you need, right? You know that you need to find the derivative at x equals 3. So let's find the derivative. That goes away, we're left with 3. Oh, so it's even better. It's it's a constant derivative. So you know that whatever this is, is 1 over the derivative evaluated at 3. We evaluate it. Oh, we don't have an x to evaluate it. It's just. So the inverse evaluated the derivative at 10. as a value that is the reciprocal of the original function evaluated at that same spot. So first, make sure you have the point in your hand. If they give you if they give you the number for one of the coordinates, make sure you know which one you're getting. Did they give you x, did they give you y? If they give you y, find x. If they give you x, find y. And then plug in x into the derivative of the original function then whatever that number is, 1 over that, and then that's your derivative of your inverse at that same point. So I want to reiterate, regardless of what it is, if you know the derivative of the original function at the point that you're at, take the reciprocal, that is the derivative of the inverse at that same spot. Okay? 
we're going to talk more about this in a little bit because I know this is something that requires your brain to marinate a little bit. It's not easy. Well, it, it's easy, but it's 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 weird, and your brain goes uh, before you really figure out that it's very easy. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is the derivative of the logarithm. So any average logarithm is going to have the following formula. And I'll get to the special easy logarithm in a second. But like if you've got any any old logarithm with any old base, it could be 2, it could be 3, it could be 5, it could be 12, it could be 90, it doesn't matter what the base is. It's the derivative of what's inside the parentheses divided by what's inside the parentheses times the natural log of a. So let's say, for example, we have log base 3 of 2x plus 1. Well, if I want to find the derivative of that, First, it's the derivative of the top here, 2x plus 1. The derivative of that is 2 over the derivative uh, over the original argument in here, 2x plus 1, times the natural log of the base, and then you're done. Now, I had something else down here. And that was the the derivative when the base is e, the natural log, right? And it's actually very simple. Let me show you the difference using the exact same problem up here. Now, instead of the natural log, instead of the log base 3, we're going to do the natural log of 2x plus 1. Same exact problem. The only difference is that the base is e. So we do 2. So derivative of the inside is 2 over, we take what's here, 2x plus 1, and we multiply it by the natural log of the base. The natural log of the base, I'm going to put this up here. Natural log of e, log base e of e, these cancel out. We're just left with the number 1. E and natural log, remember, are inverses of each other. So if you put one inside the other, they cancel out. So that's why there's no extra part here. Log When it's log base anything, you include a factor of the natural log of the base down here. But if it's log base E, that simplifies to one anyway, so we don't actually have to include it. So I mean that's the sort of the best part about about this whole thing is that natural log is like the most common situation and it's also simultaneously the easiest situation. The the log base a that I sort of have to think about this one a little bit sometimes just to remember where this extra factor goes but part of the reason why I'm sort of stuck thinking that way is because I was taught this very differently. I was taught this one first, and I was forced to memorize this one later, which I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that to you because that's awful. It's like you have to remember two different things. Whereas if you understand this situation, our special natural log situation just pops out. And it's easier to remember it is one thing than it is two. It's always easier to remember a single thing than multiple things. So I encourage you to keep this one more at the front of your mind and let this one sort of just happen. Okay? You see what I'm saying? Let me let me do another one just so y'all can get the idea for what I'm talking about here. Do, do, do. All 
I learned this notation today. LG is log base two. I'm not going to use this ever again, but I learned it today, so I wanted to share it with you because because sharing is caring. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna do this the the appropriate way. Log base two of this, and I want to take the derivative. So the very first thing, take the derivative of what's inside. Remember, the derivative of one is just zero, so we can ignore that. We can just do this part. So on top, we've got 10x, right? Now we put what's in here down, 5x squared plus 1, in parentheses, times the natural log of the base, which is 2. So 10x over... 5x squared plus 1 times the natural log of 2. This is much easier to remember, I think, than trying to remember it in two different in two different places. And so let's do the exact same thing. Maybe I'll use different numbers slightly, but with natural log, just so that we can get a feel for what's happening. Remember, Derivative on top, original argument times the natural log of the base on bottom. The derivative of what's inside here, we've got a sine, so the derivative of that is cosine. And then we just put this down on the bottom here. Times the natural log of, well, what's the base of natural log is E. So natural log of E, which is 1, so we're not going to put anything. Now, what you're left with is cosine over sine. And for, like, the AP test, if you're writing this out and you're, you've got this as a, like a, one of those free response things, you can leave it as cosine over sine. Um, but I guarantee you, at some point, someone will encourage you to take this and simplify it and say this is cotangent. But like I said, this is good, that's good, it's all good. All right, last thing I want to talk about, once we have this idea down, we can actually make life simpler for ourselves by doing what's called logarithmic differentiation. What is logarithmic differentiation? I'm going to show you. So basically the idea is, I don't want to have to work real hard to do a problem. In order to do this problem, I would need product rule. I would need chain rule. I would need a ton of stuff. I don't want to do that. Me personally, the fact that logarithmic differentiation exists is fabulous because it means that I can take this whole expression and dumb it down. What, it, what does that mean? Well, look, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log, the natural log of both sides. Remember how, how since the natural log, log base E in the bottom, that extra little part goes away? We, I'm picking this because it's, it makes life easy. I'm going to take the natural log of the left side. I'm going to take the natural log of the right side. What does that do to what does that do here? Well, first of all, taking the derivative of both sides implicitly, I can actually get this left side is uh what is it? It's one over y times dy dx. 
equals. I don't want to have to do all this extra, right? I don't want to have to do this. But if you remember, logarithms have properties. I can take this big thing in there and I can break it up into much smaller, easier to digest pieces, right? Multiplication on the inside of a natural log means addition on the outside. And so already these first two, much easier. Even this third one, remember if you've got an exponent on your, on your thing in here, you can take that exponent, bring it down to the front. So what I can do is I can take this whole thing for the price of taking a little bit of extra time to do the natural log, I can turn this into a much easier problem. Derivative over the, so this is 5x to the fourth minus 3x, uh, minus 6x four over nice. Plus, same thing here. Plus, I can take this two, bring it down, and then I've got two times, and now I can do this normally. Just what what's the derivative of four x plus one is four over like this. Now, the only other thing that there is to do once I clean this up a little bit is multiply the y up here. What is y? It's just all these. So what I can do is I can just say, well, again, what's y? y e I'm just looking at the stuff in blue. y equals this times this times this. So let me write that out. times all this madness, and I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. There's a factor of x that I can pull out of the top and the bottom a little bit, right? Uh, and I can make this cotangent again. And then 2 times 4 is 8, so I can have 8 on top here. And, I mean, four lines as opposed to probably would have been 50 lines if I did it with product rule, chain rule. Think about how annoying that would have been to try and you do this with product rule and chain rule. But with logarithmic differentiation, I was able to break it down and make it so much less confusing and complicated and annoying and uh, right? So much better. Once again, with this one, so I'm looking at this and I'm saying probably logarithmic differentiation. I can do it with logarithmic differentiation. I don't have to. I could use chain rule. Chain rule, for this one, chain rule is probably going to be about the same, especially if you're really good with radicals and you take a second to distribute this X in there so you don't have all this extra garbage on the inside. But so either way, in fact, I don't mind doing it both ways. We can do it both ways. So if we want to do it with our new tool, our shiny new logarithmic differentiation,
first thing we're going to want to do is take this radical and rewrite it as a um, fraction exponent because it'll make it a lot easier to do. Take the ln of both sides here. Make sure that everybody can see. Yeah. So now I'm going to, I've got the natural log of y equals the natural log of. In fact, you know, I if it were me, either way, I, I, I still would probably distribute just because it means less overall work for me in the long run. So first thing I can do here is I can uh, bring that. Why is it? Why did I do that? <laughs> there we go. Sorry. One half, not two. <laughs> I can take this one half and bring it down. And I've got. And look, now I just take the derivative of both sides. Let me make that a different color so it's more clear what's happening. Take the derivative of both sides. We've got 1 over y dy dx equals 1 half times derivative of the top. And then put it the same thing on the bottom, so 2x plus 7 over x squared plus 7x. And then just bring the y back up here. So we've got dy dx. That's what I'm looking for. Y is this thing in red up here. So equals the square root of x times x plus 7 times this. You know, you can even write it out like this, plus 7 over 2 times x squared plus 7x. But yeah, then it's done. Again, think about the, the difficulty comparatively doing it this way. Right? First, you have to take the derivative of the outside. so. 1 half x squared plus 7x raised to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside 2x plus 7. And then you have to bring this down here. radical or something i mean it's it's two different methods like i said with this one because this is sort of a little bit simpler chain rule is still not going to be too bad so i'm going to tell you either way either way you've got two different tools one of them is a sledgehammer one of them is i don't know whatever else could be like a sledgehammer. But you know, it's just two different tools. You can tell I don't use tools very much, huh? Um, it's two different tools that are gonna do things two different ways. And it's really your choice how you want to handle it. It's up to you. You're gonna get the same answer either way. And you know, just whatever. It's all good. Here's another one. Again, we're starting to get to that place where maybe we don't wanna use Maybe we don't want to use chain rule anymore because this is going to be really ugly, right? You know, and and you know, again, you do you, but I would rather take the log of both sides and make it easier on myself. So we got natural log of y. I'm going to rewrite this with the fraction exponents just so that I have an easier time. I hate using I hate using radicals pretty much all the time. So we got x squared plus 7 
times x minus 7 squared. And remember, this exponent distributes to both of these. So what we have is the natural log of x squared plus 7. And then since these are times, we break it into two natural logs. And then half of 2, here is 1, natural log of x minus 7. So now I take the derivative of both sides. Same thing every time on this left-hand side, 1 over y dy dx. You can bring this 1 half down to make life easier. So we got 1 half derivative of the inside over the inside. So 2x because 7 goes away. And you're left with that plus the derivative of this one, 1 over, because the derivative of x minus 7 is just 1. So 1 over x minus 7. Hey, and now we're pretty much done. Maybe cancel these twos out. That's OK. Um, and then just take this ugly thing and just write it out front. And it's like, you see how quickly this is happening, right? It's so much easier. And then these are multiplied to this. Plus 1 over x minus 7. And again, you're taking the AP exam. Your goal is to produce a derivative of a function. They don't say make it pretty. I mean, you can if you want to, but like these graders, like I've said, they're getting paid nearly two grand plus free flight and free hotel to grade these, make them earn their paycheck. Don't do more work than they do. I'm done now. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything with that. Leave it there. Live your life. You know, and again, they're giving you all the all these words up here. Just take the derivative. So a couple things that are going to maybe make this a little bit easier to do. Like this one, maybe, maybe you don't need logarithmic differentiation for this one. I'll do it, but I'm going to show you why maybe not. So like, you can rewrite this as y equals 4t plus 1 raised to the negative 1 fourth power. So you could do a pretty quick, easy chain rule, right? times the derivative of the inside is 4. And oh, look, that cancels there. So you end up with negative, in parentheses, 4t plus 1 raised to the negative 5 fourths, which if you absolutely really wanted to rewrite in a different way, you could. Um, the fourth root of 4t plus 1 all to the fifth power. I mean, you could, but this and technically this are all the derivative. You have, you have gotten... The answer that is technically correct by step two, technically correct is the best kind of correct. So like, you know, but, you know, any of these answers are fine. 
I wouldn't use logarithmic differentiation for this one. Remember, I said it's a tool. It is a... Oh, I thought there was a one on top. Huh. <laughs> so we just did a different problem, and that's okay. That was We pretended like that was a one. So if you had that, you wouldn't need logarithmic differentiation. So what happens when it's a T on top? Then ah, I still would say that maybe you don't have to, but there's a lot more to do with, with this. And maybe logarithmic differentiation will come in handy. So now I'm going to do the problem as written. So what you could do Again, set yourself up for success here. Rewrite it with good exponential stuff. Yeah. And now take the log of both sides here. And again, if it's a plus, if it's a times on the inside, it'll be a plus on the outside. And again, what you can do now is just bring down the exponent, because really the exponent's the part that makes everything kind of gross, and take the derivative. And you'll notice this doesn't take many extra steps than the one we just did because and you bring down a negative one fourth so this plus becomes a minus right the derivative of the top I always hate it when they use the variable t because my t and my plus sign are too alike to be particularly fair. All right, so now we can clean this up and bring up the 1 over y, bring it to the other side. So we've got dy over dx equals, well, this is, I'm going to put this over here, 1 over 4t minus the f these fours cancel out, makes life easier, minus 1 over 4 t plus 1. And then what are we multiplying that by? We're multiplying it by y. So the fourth root of t over 4 t plus 1. Yeah. All right. Um. Like I said, not much extra writing, yeah? I think the last one was three lines. This one is four lines. Logarithmic differentiation does help make what you have to do go faster. If you're willing to do the work and think about the logarithms, it's your best friend, I'm telling you. All right, let's do this one now. Oh, these are the best. Ones like this, these are really great. And the reason that they're great is because if you use logarithmic differentiation, it basically just that you just crank them out. I'm going to jump right to the chase. Because remember, you take the derivative left-hand side, 1 over y times 2y dx. And I'm just going to put all this right here. t plus 3, t plus 2. Plus six times. Now let's take the derivative of these pieces. Right? And I'm skipping some steps here, but like that's what makes this logarithmic differentiation so much better 
is because once you get it, it becomes so much easier to do. Take the derivative. You've got negative, bring down the negative one, negative one. Derivative of t plus 3 is just 1 over t plus 3 plus, bring down the negative 1, so that's a negative sign now. Derivative of t plus 2, 1 times t plus 2, yeah. And then the last one, same thing, minus 1 over t plus 6. And again, are you going to do anything more with this? God, I hope not. I wouldn't want to. This is fine right here. This is right. Leave it there. Don't think too hard about these. You know, and again, this is just more of the same. See, it's, I mean, it's literally just you're going to, you're going to rewrite it. Well, let's take these. We've got natural log. This first term is just x to the one fifth. The second term is x minus one to the one fifth. And the third term is x squared plus one to the negative one fifth. Don't forget to put your natural log on there. And then take the derivatives, right? Uh, bring down the one fifth, one over x. Bring down the one fifth, one over x minus one. Bring down the negative one fifth, so that's a minus sign. Derivative of this is x, x squared plus 1. And again, just take this part, multiply it to this part, and then you're good. dy over dx equals that madness, that fifth root. And it's just copying. This is, this is going to be the hardest part of the entire problem is trying to do this madness in your in the homework thing. Um, but, and then here's multiply these two together. 1 over 5x plus 1 over 5 times x minus 1 minus x over 5 times x squared plus 1. Close bracket there. Yeah. Again, one step, two step, three steps. Very few steps. If you're good with the logarithms, you're going to be great with this. I'm telling you. So much easier to do this than trying to do this with chain rule. God help us if we tried to do this with chain rule. We would be here until next Tuesday. All right, this one, now before, like, you could technically do them without chain, without uh, using logarithmic differentiation, problems like these are what logarithmic differentiation is actually designed for. This is when, th when logarithmic differentiation is literally the only tool. So what are we going to do? Take the log of both sides, right? Because now we can bring down the exponent, right? This is 7y times natural log of x equals 9x times the natural log of y. So now we can implicitly differentiate both sides, do product rule, left d right plus right d left on both sides. Uh, if I do that, let me do the other one. 
left d right plus right d left. So ln x times derivative of 7y is 7 dy dx. Left d right plus right d left. And then again, just like we've, just like y'all did so amazingly on that implicit differentiation quiz, bring the net, bring the uh, dy dx's to one side, bring the other stuff to the other side. So I'm going to make it look like this: seven y over x minus nine natural log of y equals nine x over y minus 7 ln of x all times dy dx and then divide that sucker over Ta-da! And we wouldn't have been able to do this otherwise. It's so much easier having this special power of taking the log of both sides, stripping everything down and making it simple. It's so much easier this way. So much easier this way. You know, and here's, again, another one. Um, Oh, actually, I take that back. This one is thrown at you to be confusing. If this were written as a number, 5 times x to the 6.28 blah, 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 blah. Just bring down the exponent, subtract one, right? This is just a normal power rule. Don't overthink this. Bring down the 2 pi. 5 times 2 pi is 10 pi. Times x to the down by 1. 2 x uh, 2 pi minus 1. Don't overthink this. Don't try and be doing this awkwardly. Just... Anytime pi is somewhere, remember, it's just a number. Pi is not a variable. E is not a variable. They're just numbers. They're just numbers. All right, here's another kind of kooky one. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, oh, God, what do I do? Well, let's use logarithmic differentiation. Let's make life easier for ourselves. And this is the exponent. It's going to come down. And again, natural log of five, it's still just a number. Don't don't get all weirded out about all this stuff. That natural log of five, just let it hang on for the ride. You don't have to do no product rule. You don't have to do nothing extra. Use the definition of log, right? Well, so this one is the easy one, one over y dy dx equals so again the only difference between when it's natural log and log base something else is there's a extra little factor down there derivative of log is 
what well, derivative of the t is just one over t times natural log of four times this thing. Remember, because this is a constant, we can ignore those while we take our derivative and then put them back. So when we simplify this and make it look all nice and neat, we get this monstrosity five to the natural to the log base four of t. That keeps wanting to be a nine instead of a four. Be a four. Be yourself. Times this natural log of five over t times the natural log of four. And stop. Don't do don't do more. You barely have to do this. Like I made it nice and neat, but like just put the answer down there and be done. Don't don't be extra. It's okay not to be extra. It's okay for you to say, I don't want to do all this extra. I want to do the bare minimum because that is what they're asking for. They're not paying you to do extra, right? Here's another one where you might be tempted to like do the literal actual most. So remember, here's the exponent, bring it down. Log base three of E is a number. E is 2.718281828. It goes on forever just like pi does. So log base three of 2.718288, etc. is like 0.9-ish. About. So, like, this is what this is. This is y equals roughly 1.8x, ain't it? Don't overthink the freaky looking numbers that are just numbers. The derivative of that's just 1.8. The derivative of this is just the x goes away, and we're left with 2 log base 3 of e because this is a number. What is log base three of E? Can I even do this on this one? You have to do it all, all weird on mine. Two times divided by Hey, I was off by like a thousandth or something. It's it's 1.82. So this this is, and you don't need to do that, but leave it here because no one is ever going to ask you to write the decimal approximation. But this is approximately 1.820478. That's what that is. Because it's just a number. Don't be flipped out by the numbers. The numbers are the easiest part. Just let those be.